Hello, everyone. My name is David, an architect from Yako Cloud. Today, I'm going to talk about how to achieve ultra low latency in real time communication. The key contributors to latency are introduced in several steps capturing, pre processing, encoding, transmission, digital buffering, decoding, and rendering. <clears throat> now, I will give a blow by blow account of how we optimize each step. The first step, capturing. We can reduce latency by adjusting sampling rate. Let's say we capture audio at a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz. That's to collect 44.1 thousand data points within one second. The sampling rate allows us to collect 1024 data points at a time and about 43 times within a second. Each return from the sampling API will incur a latency of 23.2 milliseconds. If we increase the sampling rate to 48 kilohertz, it allows us to collect 192 data points at a time and about 250 times within a second. The latency can be reduced to 4 milliseconds. The second step, pre-processing. Pre-processing can be used to cancel echoes, reduce noises, apply a video filter to make users look prettier or put a decoration on a user's head for fun. This all incur latency. There are two kinds of latency. One, the first one is a fixed latency of the algorithm itself, which is inevitable. Two, the other one is a computational latency. For example, we assign pre-processing of video data to GPU. We need to feed the data to GPU and then pull the data back from it. The computational task includes workload and synchronization. We found 10% to 20% of the latency is caused by synchronization alone. To achieve massive throughput, we have no choice but to rely on GPU, thus this latency is inevitable too. The third step, encoding. The goal of encoding is to reduce bandwidth. There are several ways to reduce the latency. One, choose a proper encoder for audio. There are two commonly used audio encoders. The first one is called HEAR AAC. The second one is called OPUS. HEAR AAC is designed with a fixed latency of about 129 milliseconds. OPUS proceeds with a latency of less than 10 seconds. Oh, 10 milliseconds. We choose OPUS for lower latency. Two, choose a proper encoder for video. H.264 is the most widely used video encoder. It has many different profiles, including baseline profile and main profile. The key difference between the two profiles is that baseline profile only produces iframes and p frames, and on top of those, main profile produces b frames. H.264 encoder refers to by 
to to both the future and the past for be framed by directionally. For instance, when a frame rate is set to 20 fps, a B frame is incurred will incur an actual latency of uh, 50 milliseconds. Thus, we choose the baseline profile. The, the fourth step, data transmission, the most important part. Data transmission is a very compli complicated process. It will be impacted by a number of factors, including telecommunication operators, physical distance, wireless access points, that's uh, 5G versus Wi-Fi, and network node deployment. We adopt the following strategies to reduce latency. One, choose better network infrastructure, like uh, fiber to the home or 5G. Two, build and use an intelligent data transmission network. Uh, Yako Cloud's massive serial data network is constructed with the sufficient edge nodes deployed as close to users as possible. And also, the network provides an intelligent routing strategy to pick optimized transmission route. Three, uh, implement a real-time transmission control protocol. We put a real-time transmission control protocol in place with uh, multiple sophisticated strategies to address the issues of uh, packet loss and jittering. To deal with packet loss, we set up a mechanism at the center's end to evaluate and forecast network condition and decide how much bandwidth we should utilize for encoding output. And the amount of uh, utilizable bandwidth give leeway for a few tactics, including ARQ and FEQ. FEC. ARQ helps to help us to retransmit packet as per request once there are packet loss. FEC help us to add redundancy into payload to reduce retransmission. The fifth step, jitter buffering. To cope with jitters, we set up a jitter queue at the receiver's end and are able to smooth out jitters and provide feedback to the presenter's end. The jitter queue is a buffer for arriving packets and a batch of packets will be proceeded with the decoding once the media data is buffered completely enough to play smoothly. The jitter queue also works with a mechanism to measure the volume of jitters, which provides feedback to the sender's end to evaluate and forecast network condition. Sixth step, decoding. The goal of decoding is to st restore the compressed media data for rendering. We choose either software decoding or hardware decoding based on device specification. The seventh step, the final one, rendering. We call system APIs to render no matter video or audio. The efficiency of uh, system APIs have a significant impact on latency. We recommend you to use OpenSL ES on Android to render, which is a key to obtain lower latency. For instance, 
rendering latency is crucial for in-ear monitoring feature to help singers to stay in tune. The Vivo X9 original latency for in-ear monitoring reaches 279 milliseconds and after our optimization, the latency is reduced to 14 milliseconds. This is a great leap. Latency reduction is a systematic job. It requires that a real-time mechanism is put in place and every single optimization counts in each step of the whole process. That's all for today. Thank you very much for your attention.